Well, you know, I've been told this, um, and you know, I, I'm a, I'm a fairly applied individual, mm -hmm. so I, so I try and speak in terms of my own experiences, mm -hmm. and you know, I talked about being authentic and genuine. If you can, if you can talk and respond in the first voice from the perspective of what you have known or what you've experienced or what you've heard others describe. And you can reference those things. Um, they tend to ground the content of what you're talking about mm -hmm. in an applied way that people can relate to. Mm -hmm. You know, as an institutional leader, I speak a lot. And I told my cabinet team yesterday that um, I'm tired of hearing my own voice in year one because we're trying to craft a slightly different direction and new vision mm -hmm. for the institution. Um, so with that having been said, I'm delegating some of the activities that I took a more direct role in. But you, you want to make sure that uh, you're comfortable with what you hear. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so I try and be genuine and authentic to my own experiences and life stories, if you will. Well, I always try, no matter what the forum for speaking, I always try and address a group and close with the group on the parallel of their role in leading others and their presence in their leadership role mm -hmm. at the family level, at the professional level, with their church with their, the committees they're on, what have you. Mm -hmm. And I draw upon an experience I had with um, a Hall of Fame football coach that I met on a fishing trip, just sort of serendipitously, and um, some of the, his experiences he shared with me. And this, this gentleman's name was Don Matthews, who at the time was in the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame he had just been fired from the Edmonton Eskimos mm. after a lengthy career with them, five Great Cup championships. Mm. Um, it was the first time in his life that he wasn't doing some level of football mm. in the month of August. Mm. And he'd just been fired, and I was on a mountain lake in Montana out in the middle of nowhere, eight miles off the road. Mm. And uh, he, um, found this lake, unbeknownst to me, arrived there at midnight, arrived right at the same place I was parked and camped, and we ended up fishing together over the course of that week. And there were some great life lessons for me and for the things that I aspire to or utilize or believe in related to leadership that he shared with me that I've used quite regularly. Yeah, I think, um, I think the only thing I would suggest is that, um, you know, I'm also an ethnographer, and so mm -hmm. I I firmly believe you ought to reference and document the research you do, and, oh, yeah. and uh, you ought to give, you ought to attribute to oh, yes. whoever I, those sources I, I are. I wasn't suggesting that, no, exactly. And so, yeah. and so I find in my leadership roles, um, you know, I think telling one's life story or those stories that comprise um, parts and bits and pieces of your own experience, and or telling the stories of others, mm -hmm. um, you know, all the more reason to be genuine and sincere and yeah. authentic about those. Yeah. And just make sure that people know these are either your experiences or someone else. Examples of that, um, someone was describing a football game that they were at to me it was a football game I was at. Mm. And this was some 25 years ago. And this was a game in which the team that I was rooting for was behind 33 to three mm. in the fourth quarter and ended up tying the game. Mm. And it became apparent to me that the person who was telling their rendition of that comeback and story um, wasn't really at the football game. Mm -hmm. um, my second example of that mm -hmm. was 
um, meeting up meeting up with an old acquaintance some 30 years ago having had an experience where one of my team members had been hit with a basketball in the over the eye and it shattered his glass contact on his eye and as this gentleman was explaining to me in recollecting how this happened he um, recollected that he saved the day by getting over the top of this young man and 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 this young man ended up becoming a ophthalmologist mm -hmm. an MD mm -hmm. and uh, the, the reality was that um, there was a doctor, there was a trainer, there were two coaches, and this young man was writhing back and forth on the ground. And it was five minutes into his writhing, and his eye was starting to bleed. And I took my gum out of my mouth, rolled it on my hand, got it good and sticky, shaped it like a little plunger, and then stepped my way through, put my knee on the guy's chest and said, don't move, I'm going to get that stuff out of your eye, pulled his eyelids back, and boom, 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 three little blots, and I had all the glass out of his mm -hmm. eye. But, but back to my point about using um, your own personal life stories and others in speaking, y you know, if you, you, you lose your credibility, no matter how good you were, no matter how entertaining you were, mm -hmm. no matter how humorous you were, yeah. if you lose that connection on the authenticity. Oh, sure. yeah. and, and that's sometimes hard for folks. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, you, you know, in, in my world, you sometimes have to work hard at start sorting the fish stories, where the fish got a lot longer since it was caught, mm -hmm. and the real authentic stories. Mm -hmm.